Hello everybody. Uh, in this video, I would like to talk to you about uh, supply chain management. And first, let me explain why we're talking about supply chain management in a forecasting class. Uh, we're talking about supply chain management because I want to set up the uh, background, the context for the decisions that we're going to make. And uh, our forecasts will have to uh, comply with this with this background, fit in with this background. So uh, I, work, I first want to briefly go over the basic concepts of supply chain management. And then uh, in the following classes, we're going to go over, uh, in, in, uh, we're going to go in more detail about forecasting. Okay, um, what is a supply chain? Okay. This is a simple example of a supply chain, okay? And at the heart of the supply chain is your company, okay? That is called the uh, Falcon Firm, okay? So this is the company that you're working for, okay? So the Falcon Firm will have customers, for example, this is a customer, uh, this is another customer, this is another customer, etc. Okay? So these are the direct customers of the focal firm. And these customers will have their own customers. Okay? Uh, here are some customers of this customer, customers of this customer, etc. Okay? And then uh, these customers will have their customers their customers, etc. Now the question is, uh, will this go on forever? So, focal firm, customers, 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 their customers, etc. Um, actually, not. The uh, supply chain ends with consumers. Okay. So, uh, consumers. Uh, these are um, individual end users that buy products but don't sell them, okay? So all of us are consumers, we buy products for our own use, okay? This is where uh, the supply chain ends. Now, uh, we've talked about direct customers, 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 etc. The way we uh, categorize them is direct customers are called tier one customers. Okay? So tier one customers. Okay? And uh, a focal firm's customers' customers will then be tier two customers. And then you'll have tier three, etc. Okay. So this is the customer end or consumer end of the supply chain. Now the focal firm will also have uh, suppliers. Okay. So for example, uh, um, here's a supplier, here's another supplier, another supplier, another supplier. So these are the direct immediate suppliers of the focal firm. So we call them uh, tier one suppliers. So these are the direct immediate suppliers. And the suppliers will have their own suppliers. Okay. Um, and these will be naturally called tier two suppliers, and you'll have tier three suppliers, etc. Now, does the supply chain go on forever in this end? You have suppliers, 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 their suppliers, their suppliers, etc. No, because the supply chain ends here with, or the supply chain begins with, uh, raw uh, material suppliers. Okay. So, this is a simple representation of a supply chain. 
Now, uh, of course, there is uh, reverse logistics flows, recycling, returns, etc. So that's another topic. Um, so we have uh, briefly talked about, let's just review this. Okay. So we've talked about tier, okay, tier one customer, tier two customer, tier three customer, etc. Another word for tier is echelon. They are synonymous. Okay. Uh, we've talked about customers versus consumers. Okay, what's the difference? Uh, customer is the general term. Okay. Customer uh, can be a consumer, an individual, end user, or a customer can be another organization, another firm, government, etc. Okay, so this is the umbrella term, and when the customer is an individual, then we call them consumer. Okay, so in the supply chain, we have two directions. Okay, two directions, and um, this direction is called, let me draw this direction here, so this direction is called downstream, okay, when you move closer to the consumers, this direction is downstream, the opposite direction is uh, upstream, upstream, okay. So um, now uh, there's also inbound and outbound. Okay, what's what's the difference? Inbound is something that comes to you. So if you have an inbound shipment, that's a shipment that you receive. Outbound is something that goes away from you, like an outbound shipment that a, sh a shipment that you're making. Uh, inbound flight, outbound flight, same thing. Now, uh, there are flows in a supply chain, okay? Something goes this way, something flows this way in the supply chain downstream. And there's an opposite flow, okay, uh, this way, upstream. So what goes downstream are products and services. So uh, the uh, the focal firm sells to customers, the customers sell to their customers, etc. So products move uh, this way from raw material suppliers to consumers. So this is the uh, product flow. Uh, and what flows uh, the opposite direction is uh, cash, okay? So cash flow. Okay. So there are these two streams, in, uh, two flows in this supply chain. And um, since we're in business, okay, uh, we like cash, okay? We want to maximize. We want to maximize our cash flows. And products, these are kind of costly. So, so we want to minimize the product flows. So the goal of supply chain management is to maximize cash flows while minimizing product flows. Okay, if this doesn't make sense to you, you're right. What I just said is completely wrong. Okay, you cannot maximize cash flows while minimizing product flows. Completely unrealistic, impossible. Why? Because cash flows are tied to product flows. Okay. 
you cannot have cash flow without product flow. If you think about it, where does cash come from? Well, cash comes from when, when somebody pays you. Okay? Your customers pay you, and then you have cash. Right? But they will never pay you if you don't deliver the, their, their product, the products and services they want. So in order to generate cash flow from your customers, you need to ship them the products and services that they want. Okay? So uh, you cannot separate cash flows and product flows. And if you think about it, if you stop product flows, if you stop providing products and services for your customers, your cash flow would also stop. And, and if product flows slow down, naturally cash flow slows down. If you want to improve your cash flow, you cannot improve it by accounting tricks. Okay? If you want to improve your cash flow, you better improve your product flow. So then what's the goal of supply chain management? What is the goal of managing these flows? So you want to manage product flows such that cash flows are optimized. Okay? You want to have product flows in such a way that your cash flows are maximized. That's the goal of supply chain management. So, so we've talked about uh, uh, members of a supply chain of the focal firm, suppliers, 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 their suppliers, customers, 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 their customers. There are also third parties in a supply chain, and uh, these uh, companies, organizations, don't necessarily buy or sell anything, but they facilitate product flows. So for example, trucking companies, transportation companies, airlines, warehousing companies, all of these companies help with the product flows. There are consulting firms, law firms involved in supply chains. There are government agencies involved in supply chains. For example, customs authorities, if you're importing or exporting. Department of Transportation that regulates uh, shipments and transportation. So as you can see, there is a, a whole host of organizations involved in a supply chain. Um, here's a very simple example of a supply chain. So when you think about a company's supply chain, it starts with the raw materials, sourcing department, inbound, uh, receiving materials, storage, transportation, and then customer distribution and, and uh, customers. A uh, simple representation. Here's a little bit more of a, a more complicated supply chain. Uh, let's say uh, you have three manufacturing plants, for example, and each manufacturing plant has its own warehouse. And these warehouses have the raw materials needed for the production. And you have different raw materials here. The suppliers ship raw materials to the warehouses and then the warehouses supply the plants. And uh, each plant, uh, each plant uh, ships its um, products to regional warehouses. These are finished goods uh, warehouses, distribution centers. And each warehouse services a different geographic region, maybe a different city, okay? This is a more complex, um, uh, example of a supply chain. Here's a uh, a fashion supply chain. Okay, 
So uh, on this end, we have consumers. They, now retailers get their products from wholesalers. Okay, so here are some wholesalers, and wholesalers uh, get their products from manufacturers. Uh, raw materials from textile companies, yarn and fabric, materials, etc. And then they have their own uh, raw material suppliers. So, let's, does every business have a supply chain? Okay, can you have a, a healthcare supply chain? Can you have a um, finance supply chain? Uh, yes, the idea is every company operates in a supply chain, no matter what business they're in. So here's a um, Hollywood supply chain. Let's say you're in the movie business, okay? So so your uh, your products are your end products for consumers are uh, is it DVDs or like movie theaters? So these are the retail outlets where consumers go to, and these retailers are supplied by distributors who are wholesalers, and distributors get their movies from the production company. But to make uh, movies, the production company needs uh, film, that's their raw materials, film, film manufacturers, raw materials, etc. However, it doesn't stop there, right? Because to make a movie, you need more than just physical film. You need uh, a uh, you need costumes, you need props, you need equipment, cameras, um, and then you need a director. You need a casting company. You need a uh, producer, talent agencies. So. The basic idea is, no matter what you do, you need to think about your business in a more holistic way uh, to see how this whole ecosystem works. Okay, so uh, every business has, every business lives in a in a supply chain. So, is there a formal definition? of supply chain management? And the answer is there are many definitions. The one I picked here is from CSCMT. I picked this particular definition because CSCMT is the largest professional organization for uh, supply chain management professionals. Uh, let me show you their uh, website. Okay. This is a great resource for your career. If you go to this uh, website, uh, they'll have job opportunities, they have networking opportunities, they have professional development opportunities, they have uh, educational resources, they have a global conference, they have uh, local chapters. So this is a great career resource, and it is um, actually the biggest professional organization. So it's a it's a good uh, organization to keep in mind for your career development. And they have this formal definition which is kind of long. So let me break this uh, definition down for you. Okay. So uh, we said that the goal of uh, supply chain management is to manage product flows in order to optimize cash flows, right? So this is at the heart of their um, definition of supply chain management. But what does it mean to manage product flows or to manage anything, right? So when you manage, okay, you basically do three things. Okay, so as a manager, you have three basic functions. First, you make plans, okay? As a manager, you make plans for the future. You set targets, uh, you decide schedules, 
you make plans for the future, and then uh, you implement your plans, okay? Uh, you execute your plans, and the third part of uh, management is control, okay? So what does that mean? When, first of all, when you make a plan, you set yourself a target, a budget, okay, a, or a sales quota, okay? So planning gives you a, um, a target, okay? Whatever it may be for the future, okay? And when you implement your plans, you achieve actual results. So actual sales, actual market share, actual production, actual shipment, etc. Now when you have your actual results, outcomes, uh, you go into control. Okay? You evaluate your performance by comparing the actuals to the target or to budget. Okay? So you could also call this budget. Okay? So here, you evaluate your performance, okay? and you see how much of your targets have you met. Have you fallen short of any targets? Have you failed in any of your plans? Or maybe you exceeded your, your budget, or you, you maybe exceeded your um, targets. Okay? And the idea is, what went wrong, what went right, okay? What should you do different next time, okay? And you need to decide to take corrective action uh, if necessary, okay? And so as a manager, these are your basic functions. Now, how are these applied to product flows? In the case of a supply chain, you plan your product flows. What to ship, where to ship, how much to ship, when to ship, etc. Okay? So these are your goals. You want to satisfy customer demand. Okay? And then comes the actual execution of your plans. And that will give you actual results. This is your uh, actual performance. And then you evaluate, uh, have we met our goals, have we fallen short, do we need to take any corrective action, okay? So this is what it means to manage uh, product flows, okay? So uh, supply chain management is about managing product flows, okay? Management, okay? Product flows. And uh, when you, uh, I forgot to tell one more thing. So uh, with these product flows, there is also, this also includes services and information. So product flows uh, usually go with services. Okay? When you buy a car, it's a physical product, but it comes with warranty and services. And the products also come with a lot of information, okay? And uh, products flow downstream in a supply chain, cash flows upstream in a supply chain, and information flows in both directions across the entire supply chain, okay? So we want to plan these flows, implement, and control, okay? Across the entire supply chain, Okay. I'm going to talk in more detail about why across the uh, supply chain. And you want these flows to be effective and efficient. Okay. So you're, you're uh, planning your product flows and you want to make your flows as effective and efficient as possible. So, so what's the difference between effective and efficient? So effective means 
to accomplish a goal. Okay? So if the shipment is on time, that's effective. If the shipment is late, that's not effective. Okay? So this is a zero or one outcome uh, effective. Uh, uh, and uh, efficient is a matter of degree. And in fact, uh, there is a formula for efficiency. Uh, and it is output divided by input. Okay? So this is the formula for uh, efficiency. Now, a very uh, commonly known formula for a uh, measure of efficiency is uh, fuel efficiency. Uh, fuel efficiency is uh, measured in uh, miles per gallon. Okay, so here the output is a miles. So this is the output, and the input is gallons. So this is how much fuel you put put in your tank. This is the input, gallons of fuel. And this is how long, what kind of a distance you travel, how many miles you travel. So miles divided by gallons gives you, miles per gallon, how efficient your car is, miles per gallon. So um, we want our uh, product flows to be efficient, effective, but also efficient. Okay, so uh, do businesses uh, care about efficiency, or do they even measure, do they even know their efficiency? And the answer is uh, yes, they do. But in business, what's the output and what's the input? Okay, so in, in a business context, what you put in a business is basically your investment, right? You, uh, you put investment into a business, and the output you expect from that investment is your return. So for example, uh, there are ratios like uh, return on investment, return on assets, return on equity. So all these ratios measure the efficiency of a business. In other words, businesses want the most out of their investment, so they want to be as efficient as possible. Okay? So in, in logistics management, in supply chain management, we want our flows to be effective, and we want our flows to be uh, efficient. Also, uh, we're considering forward and reverse flows. Forward means uh, the products move towards the consumer. Reverse means uh, the products move towards the manufacturers, back from the consumers, like returns, replacements, etc. And, and what is our goal? The goal is to meet customer requirements. When are we eff effective? When are, when are product flows effective? The product flows are effective only when we meet customers' requirements. Now, why do we want to meet customer requirements? Uh, we are business people. We don't care about anything but money. We don't care about people's feelings, okay? Uh, we want to make customers happy, not because we care about their feelings, but because they will pay us only if we make them happy. Okay? So, we want to maximize our cash flows, and we will only maximize our cash flows if we are effective in meeting customers' requirements so that they pay us, okay? So we want to have effective product flows along with services and information that meet customers' requirements. 
but also we want uh, to be efficient. We want to uh, consider forward flows as well as reverse flows. Okay. So and then uh, one last thing. Okay. What are customers' requirements? What do customers want? How can we make customers happy? How can we make them uh, pay us? Okay. And the answer is, customers want these things. Customers want the right products in the right place, at the right time, in the right condition, and at the right cost. So if we can accomplish these goals, the customers will pay us. Okay? So this is how we uh, maximize uh, or optimize our cash flows by managing our product flows. Okay? So this is the breakdown of the uh, definition of logistics. Okay. So uh, logistics uh, or supply chain management is that part of supply chain management that plans, implements, and controls. So we're talking about management. Efficient, effective, forward, and reverse flow and storage of goods, services, and related information, what customers want. Customers want goods, services, information. Okay. Uh, between the point of origin and the point of consumption in order to meet customers' requirements. So this is the definition of supply chain management. So there, there are some uh, examples of uh, logistics management. Uh, you can watch them for yourselves. I think they're short and very, very nice. Okay. So I'm going to skip. OK. So in supply, we say supply chain management is about managing uh, product flows, services, and information across the entire supply chain. So one could wonder, well, I mean, why do we care about the entire supply chain? Isn't that too much? Can't we just focus on our immediate customers? We ship our products, and then they pay us, and that should be the end of it. Why should we worry about our customers, our customers' customers, their customers, etc.? Okay? Why do we look beyond tier one customers? Okay. So I came up with five reasons, and there could be possibly more reasons. Uh, here, the uh, one reason is all uh, demand is derived from consumers. Okay. So our customers do not buy from us unless their customers buy from them and then their customers buy from them, all the way to consumers. So uh, the Coca-Cola company uh, advertises everywhere. Okay? We have all seen uh, countless Coca-Cola uh, commercials on TV, in the newspapers, online, etc. But if you think about it, the Coca-Cola company does not sell to consumers. In fact, none of you has probably bought anything from the Coca-Cola company, right? So sometimes my students are confused. I mean, we buy Coca-Cola every day. What, what are you talking about? See, the thing is, you never buy anything from the Coca-Cola company headquartered in Atlanta, OK? So the Coca-Cola company sells the concentrate to bottlers, the bottlers uh, make the uh, product, okay, can coke or whatever, and they sell, sell it to distributors, to retailers, and then to consumers. So even though the Coca-Cola company doesn't directly sell to consumers, it advertises to consumers. Because they know if consumers buy more from retailers, 
retailers will buy more from distributors, and when distributors uh, and then distributors will buy more from the Coca-Cola company. So uh, it is very important for you to understand how demand is generated across your distribution channel because you want to stimulate demand uh, so that your, your customers buy more from you. So that's the first reason. Another uh, reason is the uh, issue of distribution channel. So a company typically uses multiple distribution channels. Okay? For example, um, if you want to buy Coca-Cola, you can go to a uh, gas station, convenience store, you can go to a um, you can go to a grocery store, a supermarket, you can go to Target or Walmart. Okay? So the product reaches the consumers through multiple channels. But the problem is each of these channels, uh, the channels compete against each other for the same consumers. Okay? So you have multiple distribution channels who uh, start to kind of like struggle and, and, and uh, fight for the same consumer. Um, you don't want that. Okay? You don't want uh, your distribution channels trying to get into a price war, try to undermine each other. Okay? So in order for your company to maximize its sales, you want to make sure that each distribution channel works in coordination with all distribution channels without sabotaging each other. Okay? So they compete for the same customer and you want to make sure that there's, there are no conflicts between your uh, various distribution channels. The third reason is uh, market orientation. So you make a consumer product, in other words, you make a product or maybe a service that uh, is designed for the consumer. Okay? However, when you don't interact directly, for the end, with, directly with the end consumer, you may not know what the consumers want exactly. Or uh, you may not be aware of uh, your competitors. You may not be aware of the trends. Okay? So it's a good idea uh, to establish communication links with your distribution channels to gather information about what's going on in the market, in the consumer markets. Okay? So even though you may not have direct contact with consumers, you need to keep an eye on consumer markets through your connections with, the, with your distribution channels. So that's the fourth reason. The, I'm sorry, the third reason. The fourth reason is reverse logistics. Okay? So reverse logistics is when consumers or customers ship products back. Okay? Why do they do it? Sometimes they return their products they're not happy with. Uh, they uh, may ask for a repair. Um, some of the products could be unsold, merchandise, etc. Now, why is this important? This is important because of uh, customer satisfaction and to improve your sales. Now, even before a consumer buys your product or service, they want to know if they can easily return it. Or if they want to know if they can easily service this product. Okay? So even before they buy a product from you, they want to know how good your reverse logistics channels are. Is it easy to return this product? Is it easy to service this product? Okay? So for, for the consumers, you need to have, you need to establish a solid, uh, efficient, uh, reverse logistics channels by uh, working with your uh, distribution channels. Okay, so if you're a manufacturer, you need to uh, set up a system 
with your distributors and retailers about how easily customers can return their products. Okay? So, and when consu customer consumers know you have this great reverse logistics system, they can more confidently buy your products. Okay? And they have greater customer service. Uh, and lastly, if you think about consumer products, distribution channels, there's always uh, com new companies, new customers, new markets, new suppliers, new opportunities. Okay? So it's a good idea to keep an eye on what's going on with your distributors, retailers, and consumers, etc., to identify uh, growth opportunities for your company. Okay? So these are uh, five reasons, and there could be more, for why you should look beyond your immediate tier one customers. Now, let's think about the supply side. So you have your direct suppliers, your suppliers, suppliers, their suppliers, etc. Why should you look beyond your immediate suppliers? Okay? So again, I came up with I came up with five reasons, and there could be more. Uh, the first reason is your suppliers' costs are your costs. In other words, if your suppliers mismanage their operations, okay, if they're not careful, okay, uh, if they incur extra costs, they will charge you for it. And you will have to pay extra for your customers' mismanagement or inefficiency. Can you refuse to pay your uh, to pay your suppliers if they incur unnecessary costs? No. Why? Because you have to cover all of your suppliers' costs for your supplier to remain in business. If you want to keep doing business with a supplier, they will, uh, ins uh, they will put all of their costs they will, uh, into your price, and you pay a price which will cover all of their costs. If you don't pay as much, uh, they will go out of business. Okay? So if you want a stable buyer-supplier relationship, you have to cover your customers' costs, which are built into the price. Now, uh, you, have a cust uh, you have a supplier, okay? Uh, you like them in general, but you feel like they're, uh, they could be more efficient, okay? So what you do is, you work with your suppliers to reduce their costs, okay? And in fact, uh, the price you pay to your supplier includes your supplier's costs as well as their supplier's costs, as well as their supplier's supplier's costs, etc., all the way to raw material suppliers. So uh, I was uh, doing a uh, project for Wendy's. So I was uh, doing a project for Wendy's um, and um, they wanted to take out all unnecessary costs from their supply chain. So they started with the most expensive raw material they used, which was chicken. Okay? So they said, let's trace the, uh, our supply chain for chicken uh, and see if there are any unnecessary costs that we can eliminate. So they looked at their meat packing suppliers, they looked at their farms. They went all the way to egg production. Okay, so they traced all the product flows, all the processes, all the way from the egg to the chicken meat, and they tried to eliminate all the unnecessary unnecessary costs across the supply chain, and uh, the savings that they received they would pass on to their customers. Okay, so if your suppliers' costs are your costs, and if you want to reduce your uh, uh, raw material costs, you need to work 
with your suppliers, their suppliers, and their suppliers, etc. Another reason uh, for looking beyond your immediate suppliers is the quality. Okay? So let's say you're a uh, retailer, you sell toys, and you purchase your toys from a manufacturer, and the manufacturer, let's say, buys um, paint to make uh, toys, and the paint manufacturer uses uh, poisonous lead paint. Okay, so the problem is not with your supplier, but with your supplier's supplier. Okay, so the quality problems propagate through the supply chain. So it's not enough to ensure good quality with your supplier, but you need to look at your supplier, supplier, their supplier, etc. So basically, garbage in, garbage out. Okay. If you want to produce a good, high-quality product, you need to start with high-quality raw materials. Okay. So for that, you need to trace your supply chain all the way back to raw material suppliers to make sure that there's high quality at every stage in the supply chain. Uh, another reason for uh, uh, considering uh, suppliers beyond your immediate suppliers is uh, reliability and availability of supplies. And this is very important because if you have, if you depend on a single supplier and uh, they stop production for some reason or they stop shipments for some reason, um, you'll run out of raw materials. You cannot, you cannot provide your products and services anymore. So what a lot of companies do is they go to uh, dual sourcing uh, methods where uh, for each uh, raw material they need, they find multiple suppliers and uh, they look back at their suppliers, suppliers, etc. So you, know, you may have multiple suppliers for a raw material, but they all may depend on a single supplier. Okay, even though you have multiple sources, there's a bottleneck. Okay, there's a there's a critical point in your supply chain. Okay, so you want to make sure that you have multiple sources of raw materials across your entire supply chain. Uh, another reason for looking. Uh, beyond your immediate suppliers is a lot of innovation ideas come from your suppliers and their suppliers and their suppliers. Because people innovate constantly, there's new technology, there are new materials, there are new production techniques, etc. that you know, people innovate all the time. So it's a good idea to look at what's happening with your suppliers, their suppliers, their suppliers, etc to identify uh, opportunities to reduce your costs. Okay? New technologies, new materials, new products, new sourcing, new management techniques. It's a good idea to keep uh, an eye of, of, uh, on what's going on with the uh, supply part of the supply chain. And again, lastly, uh, there's also constant evolution. Uh, there will be new suppliers, there will be new companies, there will be new competitors, new markets, etc. So it's a good idea to uh, keep an eye on, uh, uh, on your supply chain. Um, so, So lastly, I want to talk about uh, a few concepts. Uh, one concept is the concept of uh, value chain. Uh, this idea was conceived by uh, Michael Porter, who is a, uh, who's a famous economist, uh, Harvard professor. And uh, he's talking about the value chain, different activities happening in a supply chain. So this concept divides 
a company's activities into the technologically and economically distinct activities it performs to do business, okay? We call these value activities, okay? The value a company creates is measured by the amount that the buyers are willing to pay for a product or a service. We talk about adding value, value added, but what is value? In the simplest terms, value is anything and everything that customers are willing to pay for. Okay? So, this marker has value. How do I know? Well, because somebody paid for this marker. Well, what, why, why does it make this valuable? Well, people are not stupid, okay? I mean, if they didn't see value in this marker, they wouldn't have paid for it, okay? So, when you work uh, as a professional in your company, you need to think about, how does my company add value, okay? Because if you don't add value, you're not going to get paid. And for your own career, how does your job, how does your, uh, your, your work contribute to the value that your company creates? Okay? So uh, it's a good idea to think about your company as well as your own personal position in the company, how value gets created and what is your role in creating that value? So here's a breakdown of this. I'm going to skip this. So let's uh, talk about operations management and, uh, and uh, marketing. So So companies uh, want to maximize their profits, okay? So uh, how does that work? So you earn revenue, sales revenue, okay? Minus your cost, cost of goods sold, and then uh, you earn your profits, okay? Revenues, cost, and uh, profit. Now, operations management, the people who make and deliver the products and services, uh, focus on cost, okay? So their goal is to minimize the costs. And marketing and sales uh, tries to maximize revenue, okay? So the higher the revenues, and the lower the costs, uh, the higher the profits, okay? Why is it like this? Because operations cannot control sales, so they, they have a more direct control on costs, so they focus on costs, and sales and marketing has a more direct control on revenue, so they focus on revenues, okay? So, uh, in order to maximize your profits, you want to increase your revenues as much as possible and reduce your costs uh, as much as possible. Which one is more important? Okay, so, so as a manager, uh, should you focus on increasing revenues or Reducing costs. Okay. Now, uh, in my humble opinion, sales revenues trump everything in a business. Okay. Revenues are the most important thing. So, uh, if you want to improve your career, if you want to advance, if you want to get promoted, 
try to increase your company's revenues. Okay. How, how, why, why is that so? So there are three reasons why you should focus on increasing revenues rather than decreasing costs. Number one, how much can you decrease costs? I mean, you can decrease costs by 10%, 20 30 etc. But there's a limit to how much you can reduce your costs. How much can you increase your revenues? The sky's the limit, right? So there is much more opportunity here than here. Okay. So uh, that's the first reason you should focus on revenues. The second reason is uh, when you sell more, okay, when you sell more products and services, there is economies of scale. Okay, so as you sell more and more units. Uh, the overhead costs get distributed on, uh, across more and more units, and the unit profit increases. Okay, so as you sell more, not only do revenues go higher, your unit costs will automatically uh, decrease uh, just because you're selling more. So. As you're increasing revenues, you're already reducing your unit costs. That's the second reason why uh, you should focus on revenues rather than costs. And the third reason is revenue growth excuses any and all managerial mistakes. So you could be the world's worst manager. You could be making the uh, all the mistakes in the book. However, you will keep your position as long as you grow revenues. Now, if you think about uh, a good example, I'd like to give is uh, uh, Steve Jobs. Everybody loves Steve Jobs, right? See, Steve Jobs is an icon, but was he a nice guy? Okay. Did he treat people well with dignity and respect? Actually, he was a jerk. Okay? It said that Apple employees were afraid of getting in the same elevator with Steve Jobs because he was known to fire people on the spot. He was a jerk. But people loved him because he generated revenues. Okay? So uh, that's the third reason. Now, um, I want to finish up with uh, three terms. Okay. There is uh, supply chain management, demand chain management, and value chain management. Okay. And these are all synonymous. They are the same thing. Supply chain management, demand chain management, value chain management. But if they're the same thing, why do people come up with new terms for an old concept? And the reason for this is uh, consulting companies. They, uh, they run out of things to sell, and then they come up with new labels for old things. Okay? Uh, supply chain, demand chain, and value chain. However, they cannot come up with completely uh, uh, meaningless new terms, there's a reason uh, they talk about supply, demand, and value in the supply chain. Because each of them have a different role. Okay? Now the role of supply in the supply chain is supply defines the supply chain. So if you want to map your supply chain, you need to trace supply. Who buys from whom, who sells to whom, and as you trace product flows, supplies, you will uh, map your supply chain. Okay? Tracing supply will give you your supply chain. Okay? The role of the supply in supply chain is supply defines 
the supply chain. What is the role of demand in the supply chain? Demand drives the supply chain and it triggers all supply chain activities. What happens in a supply chain? Production, shipment, um, storage, etc. What happens in the supply chain depends on demand. How much something happens, the level of activity, depends on demand. Timing of supply chain activities depend on demand. Place of supply chain activities where something happens depends on demand. So all the supply chain activities depend on demand. So the uh, uh, role of demand in supply chain is demand drives the supply chain. How about value? Okay. We said companies add value through their products and services, and each member in the supply chain has to add value through a product or service. Otherwise, they will be automatically excluded from the supply chain. As soon as your company stops adding value, Supply chain, other supply chain partners will stop doing business with it. Okay, so it's important for every company to know exactly how they add value to their supply chain partners. As long as they add value, they add value to their supply chain partners, they will stay in business and work with their supply chain partners. So uh, this is the last slide. Uh, so in this class, we're going to look at forecasts. And these forecasts will support the following decisions. Okay? These forecasts will be designed specifically for managers to make uh, decisions on what to buy and sell, what to buy, when, how much, where, etc. Uh, some of the decisions will be production decisions, some of the decisions will be investment decisions, some of the decisions will be product allocation decisions, uh, resource allocation decisions. Okay, So our forecasts will be made to support these managerial decisions. Now there are other forecasts that we will not focus on. So we're not going to focus on weather forecasting, There are other forecasts that we will not focus on. So, for example, we're not going to talk about weather forecasting. We're not going to talk about economic forecasting. We're not going to talk about unemployment, etc. We're not going to talk about demographic, uh, the graying of the population, etc. We're not going to talk about stock market forecasting. We're not going to talk about political voting, election results, etc. So we're going to basically focus on uh, forecasts that support such managerial decisions. Okay. Uh, this concludes the first chapter. Thank you for watching.